Hey guys and gals, it's me Subday Rocket and there are many mysteries to the little world that we live in. Is time travel actually possible? Do aliens actually exist? And one of the big questions of last year, how come Superday Rocket hasn't reviewed a single Marvel show back in 2021? Well, you see, I didn't really have much to say for each show to make an entire video for, well, each show that came out last year. So I decided to wait until the year ended and decided to review every single Marvel show back in 2021 in one entire video. So yes, we're going to be reviewing WandaVision all the way up to Hawkeye in this little awesome video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Ready for lift that super thing, you're rocking, get ready for it. Before we begin a little escapade here, I want to tell a little story. Back in 2019, when I was doing my endgame review, I was thinking to myself that I kind of felt a bit too positive when I was making the review. So I was thinking to myself, oh, maybe later on down the line, I should make like a little video just compiling all the things that I don't like about the film. But the weird thing is, I never made that video because most of my problems with the movie kind of were resolved in a lot of these shows. When I was watching Endgame, I was thinking to myself that uh, even back in Infinity War, I was wondering to myself how did Wanda and Vision get together. It's a bit odd because, yeah, sure, we have hints of it in the past and that's what happened in the comics, but still, I kind of feel like it didn't do a good job at establishing a relationship between these two. But of course, soon enough, we find out that they were saving that. I guess maybe they were like, oh shoot, we didn't do that properly, didn't we? So we're gonna make a TV show all about it. The first show we saw in 2021, WandaVision. And I really like how they really explore Wanda as a character and, you know, his importance in the MCU because before this, Nobody really cared about Wanda, let's be honest. I didn't really remember that she was in the film sometimes, uh, admittedly. I mean, we were all focusing on the Thanos snap and all the other crazy stuff that was happening. So Wanda was just a little footnote in that whole thing. But soon enough, now that Infinity War and Endgame is over, they're really showing that Wanda is a big deal and is somebody really important down the line. And I'm really glad that they really emphasized that. I also love the sense of mystery that we have in the couple of episodes that we have in the beginning because we had no idea what was going on. So it was so fun to speculate what was happening. I was there for the Mephisto theories and I was there when everybody was excited for a certain person appearing and getting disappointed that it's not who we think it is. And uh, now thinking about it now, it's kind of a teaser for what's to come. And uh, yeah, it's just so fun because we didn't know what was going on. Seriously, it was just us trust into this weird warped reality where we're just parroting this random old TV shows, which is fitting considering this is the first MCU show, uh, if you not count the Netflix stuff. It kind of reminds me of a... Uh, I went out to watch... of a... Uh, welcome back to another video... of... Hmm... And it was so sad to see the end of the speculation once the show was over. But we didn't have to wait long for another series to take its place with good old Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So I was really surprised with this show in particular. I didn't know it was going to be amount to so much in the MCU than I thought it would. Um, the trailers didn't give us much, but once I watched the series, I was like, wow, they're really exploring how difficult it is for Falcon to step into the shoes of Captain America. They just get into it so deep that I never thought they were gonna do it. So yeah, I was so surprised and I'm actually really happy for it. I mean, come on, it's, if you were going to become the big symbol of a, a country or just almost technically the entire world, yeah, there's a lot of pressure. And what better way to test that with a crisis that's insane, like the blip. If you recall back in my endgame, let's predict it, I said that I wanted to see them explore, uh, you know, how society is affected with this whole blip situation. But unfortunately, we never got that in endgame, and we didn't even get that after the fact. <laughs> Far from home just brushed it off, like, you know, it's just, you know, another crazy incident that just happens in the world of superheroes and move on. Whoa, I'm a random citizen. What just happened? What's that? I've been gone for five years? Okay, 
Time to go back to my everyday life. But here, yeah, sure, we didn't get to see what happens with, you know, half the people are gone, but we are actually going to go into what happens with, you know, the people who came back and see how difficult it is for the government to manage the whole thing. And they need somebody to really give the hope they need to you say that, you know, we're gonna be okay. So yeah, this is such a cool way to really show how pressure, uh, pressurized, pressurized, is that a real word? Pressurized, this could be for a falcon. Sam. Uncle Sam! It makes sense! And not only that, we also get to see more of Bucky and how he's affected with being a good guy after being a bad guy for so long. We never really thought of all of this, but when we were watching Civil War, we were saying, oh, okay, he's a good guy now, that's cool. But there's a lot of implications with that, and I'm really glad they explored it fully. This literally is a show about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Out of all the shows we are reviewing today, this is the series that was definitely needed. Not my favorite, but still. Out of all of these, this was needed in the MCU. But that doesn't mean the others needed to exist. This definitely did, especially considering how much it introduces to the MCU. Of course, this is, this, there's no hiding from it. This definitely shows the multiverse in its entirety and how it works. Although the weird thing is, it's done in a very weird way that I didn't expect. For being something that shows a big deal in the MCU, they, they really kind of just make it like it's no big deal. It's just very calm. There's nothing too intense. There's no like intense feelings going around, I guess. Which is weird. I mean, I love the characters that they have in this film. I mean, the show, sorry. Uh, I really love Loki's interactions with good old Morbius, played by Owen Wilson. My childhood has finally come back. Yeah, I didn't grow up with Owen Wilson, but it's so fun to see his interactions. It's so great seeing his first time in the Marvel Universe. And uh, yeah, it, it's, although it's, it's just so weird, I don't know why. I, I, I felt odd when it's just like, 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 I guess this. So the multiverse exists, and uh, we made it not exist. Oh, okay. And uh, you literally had no free will over your life. At all. I... I see. There's nothing even in this thing. I mean, who knows? Maybe this is the point. I guess you consider this the calm before the storm. I mean, yeah, I kind of feel like with this kind of intensity, maybe you need to make it more relaxed so people can understand it better, which I guess I can understand. But uh, yeah, of course, soon enough, uh, we get to see uh, the multiverse and its entirety, which leads into the next film. Sorry, series. I, I, I'm so used to saying that. <laughs> which of course, three, oh shoot, hang on, I forgot that. Behold, our next series in this lineup, Marvel's What If based on the comics with the same name, which is great. And it is actually the first ever animated show in the MCU. Yeah, I can definitely confidently say that. I don't think they have that in the Netflix series, but uh, yeah. I do really like the animation style in this uh, little series. I do really feel like it fits the MCU well, and I do really like the little touches of like weird ink blobs, a nice little callback to, you know, the comic roots. And uh, I do really like the progression of the episodes in this series. I heard a lot of people don't really like the first episode in this little series because it's just a, you know, a regular switcheroo, replace um, Steve Rogers with Peggy Carter and that's it. But uh, still, I do feel like that's a good introduction to the multiverse because, you know, one single change can change everything and uh, things do get crazier and crazier. Uh, after that and uh, it's awesome. It's also just so fun to see all these nostalgic moments from the MCU. Yes, they're considered nostalgic now. I, I pinpoint it down now and uh, yeah, this is so fun. I remember all the stuff from what is considered Coulson's big break with the, you know, the Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2 and uh, Thor. Yeah, what a great time to be alive for that guy. What? I'm really glad they really explored the multiverse and how things can be different in so many different ways. So hopefully things will get even more interesting with season two because it's already confirmed they're gonna have one. 
So yeah, color me excited. And finally, we have Hawkeye. And funny enough, I know this seems a bit odd, but it actually is kind of my favorite series that we have in 2021. I mean, yeah, sure, it's not as crazy as all the other shows that we got, but I think that's what makes it charming. I kind of feel like it is fun to have these little, uh, little shows or movies that don't do any crazy stakes and are just very down to earth, you know? I, I do like exploring that part of the universe, all these big superhero universes. It's fun to do. I mean, we got fun little things like, you know, uh, Hawkeye interacting with these LARPer guys and uh, yeah, it's just so fun to see. And I'm really glad this really explores Hawkeye as a character. Of course, we got superheroes with big abilities. They even mentioned this in the show. And uh, all of those other superheroes have some kind of deep past. But Hawkeye, he's just a guy who got a job as a, an agent and it suddenly became a superhero job. And uh, it's great to see his thoughts on the whole thing. I really like that. And really see, you know, what other people think of Hawkeye thanks to, you know, our, our brand new character, Kate Bishop, which is pretty fun. And I really like her interactions with with, with, what, why am I, huh, what's happening? Remain calm, Daniel, it's just good old Lena Lance here looking out for you because, uh, yeah, you said a name that was a huge spoiler. I mean, isn't it obvious that, you know, he was gonna be in this, I can't even say that? Sorry, Daniel, but considering the fact that the person who played the character got called out on social media or spoiling it during the day the episode released, we decided we can't take that risk. Ah, uh, oh well, um, you know who appears and I really like the interactions between, you know, and good old Kate Bishop. And uh, yeah, I just really love that they really go in depth with, you know, uh, Black Widow's uh, sacrifice and how that affected um, good old Kling Barton as well. So I really like the emotional cuts that they have here, which is great as well. Not to mention also exploring, you know, his past as Ronan as well. So it, it's just really nice. I mean, we have some nice emotional deep cuts. It's not too crazy of a story. It's very, I guess, simplistic, not too simplistic. It's just, again, down to earth, which I love. I love that now and then. I, this is the reason why I love Shazam back in the day. It definitely gave me that same feeling, which is nice. I, I loved Rogers the Musical, that was so fun. And uh, yeah. It's a charming little show that became my favorite out of all of these, surprisingly. But that doesn't mean I don't like the rest of the series. Again, I love them. I'm really glad that we got all these series back in 2021. And it really shows that even in the small screen, Marvel can do some awesome stuff. And I'm really excited for 2022 with all the other series. I mean, I already saw the trailer from Moon Knight and I'm really excited. And now I know exactly what to say to when I have a call, but I'm busy doing something else. Hey bro, it's, it's really important. Hold, hold the phone. Hold the phone. It's urgent. Hold the phone. I can't. It's, oh. it's, it's really, really important. Hold the phone. Like, I, cannot, I cannot do this. Please, like, hold the phone. This problem right now. Um, yeah. So with that said, all right guys and girls thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it for my next video it's not going to be a review we don't have reviews uh in january we're already done with that we're gonna have some more in february but we're not done with this one just yet i have two uh, little videos that i plan to do and they're very interesting i don't want to spoil it just yet but you have to wait and see so until then rock it on I jumped. Woo!